Hello, um, this is Mustafa again. Uh, in the previous video, I showed you how to execute a simulation on Pollination Cloud using our uh, Grasshopper plugin. In this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate that, how to access that simulation, that run uh, from Pollination and visualize everything back or basically recreate everything back inside Grasshopper. For the advanced users, this is how. If you want to take a screenshot and don't watch the video, done okay for the rest of you or if you're advanced and you're interested to see how a step by step this is how you do it so again i have a run on pollination this one that i just ran uh, the daylight factor of an enrol building and i want to access this uh, from inside grasshopper it happens a lot for different reasons the most common one can be qa qc so someone executes the simulation in your team someone else wants to check the result the other one is you do a project, you write the report, you do all this stuff, the client come back and say like, oh, this was great, but we want this thing and that thing change. And you usually like, who ran it on what machine? Like, go find it. Sometimes you can't find it. You have to rerun everything. It's just a very broken system. It shouldn't be like that. When you run a simulation, you should be able to access it from any other machine. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm already logged in. If you're not logged in, you have to do the same thing or when you double click, let me actually do this. So it's just like for some people who are not logged in. So I just bring this component that's called, uh, let's do this. Uh, that's called check job status. Um, I'm going to double click. It says I'm not logged in. Okay, log me in please. Thank you so much. Now I go back, now I'm logged in. If I have the job ID, I can actually connect it here and type it. Um, and I think that's a better way of doing it because it's more explicit. But if you don't have a job ID, you can just double click here. We have a UI that allows you to look through the different projects that you have and load the results. So remember, my uh, I, I executed that on, under Android building. And you can see when I go here, I can see all the public projects on Pollination. And I can see all even the private projects that they have access to on pollination so let's see this probably like all of them are public based on this but if we had a private project on ladybug tools i could see it other people wouldn't be seeing it but okay here i want this project i select it and it was only one run uh, which we did and this is now you can see like naming the recipe makes sense and all this description oh this is actually a message and this is a this is the report that there was only one run and it was successful again when we do a parametric uh, study it makes more sense that why we have this because you can have multiple runs so okay let's just bring this project done so when i do this it brings a project here this is the same run it downloads that run from that project for me um you see an index here. This is again like makes sense when you have parametric runs. You see like it says one, which means like there is one job that's com one run that's completed. If you have multiple runs, it will be multiple numbers. I'll show you that in the in another video. But for now, we have this run. How do you get everything down? It's very similar to what we did in the other video. So there is one component that gives you the results, and you should know by now how do you. To access this result there's a star here so i have to download it because it's a file or a folder in this case the folder here's the interesting thing it, if you remember i said you want to be clean uh, i downloaded it under demo project so this component checks actually by default um, and it doesn't always all the asset every time so if it's cached if it's already has been downloaded on your machine then it doesn't download it. That's why it's good to have like a similar project folder on your machine in the same folder. So you make sure you don't uh, download like large files over and over and slow down your process. You see, it didn't take that much time because it just loaded it from what I had before. Uh, so it's good. I have the results, but I want to visualize it. I need the geometry, which I don't have. And you know that kind of thing of like, oh, what was the Rhino file that I had? What was the Grasshopper file that I had? Not anymore. So... The way it happens now, there is another component here that loads all the inputs for this run. And remember, these are the inputs for this run, not the inputs for that project. Because someone else can go and override the model that you had in the project in that folder for another run, for another simulation, right? 
there is a snapshot every time that you run it, which is very important because now you have access to all the inputs and outputs that you ran for that specific run. Um, and this is great for at least for QA and QC. Like you make sure like you know all the inputs that you put in the model, you have access to all the outputs that you get out of the model. No guesswork, no like I don't know who ran it on what machine uh, kind of thing. Again, model is also has a star because it's a Honeybee JSON file. We have to download it. The other ones that are not files or folders are just like available right away. So this is the radiance input that we put in and sensor count, if you remember, it was 200 and we didn't filter the grids. It ran the simulation for all the, all the grids. So let me download the model to, I just connected here. Here we go. So that was the results. Now I have the model from here again. So this was all pollination things that I needed. From here, I have a Honeybee JSON file and I have the results. It's a Ladybug Tools workflow. But for this one, I'm going to show it. Unlike the other one, I'm not going to copy paste that. It's already a short video, so it's just good to go through the process. Um, and I make sure I still know how to use Ladybug tools. That's also important. So I need to load the object, Honeybee JSON. This component does it. I connect the model and then bring a boolean, load the model. And now I get it as a honeybee object to just visualize it and make sure it looks correct. Here you go. This is the model. I mean, if you have watched any videos that I've done, I have issues with this default red color. So let me adjust that. Here we go. So now we have a good presentation. So we have the geometry. That's good. We have the results. We need the mesh. How do you get the mesh? So under honeybee radiance, there is a component that gets the mesh and grids from a honeybee object or honeybee model sorry this object is model so here we go this is my points that are visualized in the mesh i'm going to turn off the preview here and i have the grids i have the results and the order is already matching again this is like a magic that happens like under the hood for you like how it gets sorted you don't have to worry about that if you'd like to know more about it just post a question on uh, on the forum, I would love to talk about it, of course. Uh, so we have the grid, we have the results. Let's visualize it. Uh, how do you visualize this stuff? Uh, we changed the name of this component. So it's called uh, a Ladybug Special Heat Map. It needs, it takes the values and meshes. The values are uh, data trees. The meshes are also a list. I'm going to join the meshes and flatten the results. Otherwise, I'll get like a different legend for every single mesh. That's not what I want. Connect it here. This is the result. Turn off the preview. So here's the mesh. Values are here. I'm going to flatten them. I'm going to be explicit. So I'm going to use a component for you here. Here we go. Bingo. Here is the results. But yeah, let's not judge anything because the legend is not set. One of the things that we are adding to this recipe is, is actually a default legend parameter. So it comes out here. So you can just take the legend parameters and like connect it here instead of like setting up the legend parameter for daylight factor every time. But for now, let's use it as a, as an opportunity, educational opportunity and, and do the legend parameters. So it's daylight factor. It's in percentage, uh, depending on code, uh, value of like two to five is something that you want to reach to make sure you will get enough daylight. Um, I'll go with five and see like how it looks like, uh, minimum, maximum, and then legend parameters. Look at this. You can see like these areas are getting enough daylight. This areas in the, will have like potentially will have issues. Again, this is a overcast sky. Let's add some more information here. So the legend title is percent globe percentage and then the global title is daylight factor again like we will bring we should provide a default one coming with the recipe so you don't have to do all this stuff every time and one other thing is because like I want to just like regenerate the color again here I'm going to use this component and I'm going to use the ones that we call Ecotact, uh, which is similar to the colors that Ecotact had. Uh, here you go. 
So now you have basically everything created from scratch from Pollination and it's always there. You can always access it. Doing the same thing. Here is a line between various Pollination and... <laughs> yeah, I should get it. This screen touch or something. This is bad, but it's okay. You get it. So this is all the Pollination side. This is the Ladybug Tools side uh, of the thing. And again, you can basically, if you want to internalize this model, this is already actually saved as a local file. And you can just now come and like edit the model, use it for another study if you want to run. Or as I said, do a QAQC and check and someone should ask you like, why do you have all these rooms with no windows here? Probably there is a problem in the model, but you won't know until you visualize the results. Here we go. Okay. Great. Um, this is the second video uh, in the process. In the third one, I'm going to show you how to run a parametric study, which so many people ask for. Okay, we'll see you there. Bye.